and welcome to the Times of India. I am Tanu Kapoor. Here are the top stories from the Times Top 10. 25 million students of whom 20 are from Kerala are trapped in Wuhan after the Chinese city of 11 million locked down to contain the spread of the new strain of coronavirus while 14 students entering at the hospital in Chang, about 300 kilometers from Wuhan, plan to fly to Kolkata from Kuming Airport on Thursday night or Friday morning. We are closely monitoring the evolving situation in China, including advisories issued by the World Health Organization. In this connection, the relevant Chinese authorities have assured assistance to residents of Wuhan, including food supply, the Indian Embassy in Beijing said in the statement. The Indian Embassy has started two hotlines for those who wish to get in touch with in this regard, 81208362 and 86120836176. Six forty-four militants of eight insurgent groups in Assam formally laid down their weapons at an event in Guwahati on Thursday. It has been called one of the biggest ever surrenders in Assam, which included a huge cache of arms and ammunition, such as rocket launchers, grenades, bombs, among others. While such surrenders reduce violence, they also come with a share of perks. Depending on where the militant operates and eventually surrenders, he gets the monetary reward. This comprises a lump sum which is paid into the fixed deposit and a monthly stipend. The FD can be withdrawn only after a specified number of years. For instance, in the case of militants in Northeast, excluding those of Sikkim and Mizoram, the government pays an immediate grant of Rs 4 lakh, which is logged in the FD for three years. In addition, they get Rs 6,000 per month as a stipend for three years. Then there are two grades of immediate grants to both Naxals and Kashmiri militants. Top Naxal leaders get Rs 2.5 lakh while lower and middle class grades get just Rs 1.5 lakh in Kashmir too. There are two amounts for the fixed deposit, Rs 5 lakh and Rs 6 lakh. Surrendered militants also receive a monetary composition for the arms and ammunition or weapons such they surrender. They are usually given vocational training to enable them to either become employable or start their own business. As for the crimes they have committed, unless they are the heinous nature like murder or rapes, the government drops the charges or may offer a plea deal. The Centre on Thursday announced the formation of committees and the group of ministers to sell properties of Chinese and Pakistani nationals seized by the Indian government after the 1962 war against China and the 65 and 71 was against Pakistan. There are 9406 enemy properties worth over 1 lakh crore, hundred of crores worth of enemy shares and gold and silver jewellery worth Rs 38 lakh held by the government. The Enemy Property Act enacted in 1968 regulates such properties. The Act was amended in 2017 to ensure the hires of those who migrated to Pakistan and China will have no claim over the properties left behind in India. Pakistan had also sold similar owned properties it had seized, included in East Pakistan. This was in violation of tactic declaration signed in 1966 that said the two countries would discuss the return of the assets taken over by either side in connection with the 1965 war. The government was trying to sell the seized assets. Last year, it appointed a committee to sell over 6.5 crore shares that were under the custody of the custodian of enemy property for India and raised over 1874 crore. At the time when the slowing economy has put pressure on government revenues, asset monetization of with selling enemy properties as a part offers a way to raise money in the short term. India rank has slipped by two places in the latest Corruption Perceptions Index report published by Transparency International, with a score of 41-0 for highly corrupt and 100 for very clean. India is ranked joint 80th with other four nations, namely Benin, China, Ghana, and Morocco. In last year's report. India was ranked 78, though it had the same score. The report says, even in democracies such as Australia 
and India unfair the opaque political financing and in undue influence in decision making and lobbying by powerful corporate interest groups, result in stagnation or decline in control of corruption. On India, the index takes the note of reports on Indian electoral scheme, which allows political parties to receive unlimited donations from Indian and foreign companies without having to disclose their identity. Tunisia, the world's longest democracy, is placed higher than India at 74. So are the Mognakis of South Arabia and Qatar, ranked 51 and 30 respectively. India, tiny neighbour Bhutan is even higher at 25. Denmark and New Zealand top the ranking with a score of 87 each. However, India is least corrupt among its neighbours. China, which hosted a key meeting of the International Terror Financing Watchdog, Financial Action Task Force said on Thursday that Pakistan has made a visual progress to strengthen its counter-terrorism financing system. FAFT's Asia-Pacific Joint Group met in Beijing this week to scrutinize Pakistan's 650-page progress report. China is the president of the FATF and co-chair for Asia-Pacific Joint Group. The FATF had in October last year decided to keep Pakistan on its grey list for failure to curb funneling of funds to terror group Lakshare Taiba, Jaish e Mohammed, and others. If not removed off the list by April, Pakistan may move to blacklist of countries that face severe economic sanctions, such as Iran. Pakistan media reports said on Thursday that the country has successfully defended its compliance to come out of the grey list. It needs 12 votes out of total 39 in the plenary meeting of FATF scheduled to be held in Paris on Feb 2016. The largely peaceful protest being held in the country would enable a deepening of India's democratic roots, former President Pranam Mukherjee said on Thursday. The assertion of the youth and the belief in the constitution was heartening to see, Mukherjee said. Democracy thrives on listening, deliberating, discussing, arguing and even dissent. The last few months have witnessed people come out on the streets in large numbers, particularly the young, to voice their views on issues which, in their opinion, are important, the former president said at the function organized by the Election Commission. The Election Commission served its purpose well and any attempt at its denigration will be the amount of denigrating the electoral process. The Trump administration on Thursday published new visa rules aimed at restricting birth tourism, in which women travel to the U.S. to give birth to so their children can have a U.S. passport. Applicants will be denied tourist visas if they are determined by consular officers to be coming to U.S. primarily to give birth, according to the rules in the Federal Register. The practice of traveling to the U.S. to give birth is fundamentally legal, although there are scattered cases of authorities arresting operators of birth tourism, agencies for visa fraud and tax evasion. The State Department does not believe that visiting the United States for the primary purpose of obtaining U.S. citizenship for the child by giving birth in the United States, an activity commonly referred to as birth tourism, is the legitimate activity for pleasure of the recreational nature according to the new rules. Birch tourism is the lucrative business in both the US and abroad. Companies take out advertisements and charge up to $80,000 to facilitate practice among hotel rooms and medical care. Many of the women travel from Russia and China to give birth in the US. That's all from us. Do stay tuned in to Times of India for live updates.